Hey guys and welcome to another tutorial. This is going to be a follow up of the previous tutorial. It's going to be actually lighting the the actual object. Now it won't be exactly the same as mine and the reason for that is because it's very very hard to actually recreate something um, especially when there's a lot of settings involved. So I'm going to try follow it as closely as possible but there will be some variants especially because it's a completely different scene. Um, but the general idea on how to light it is the same. So this is the actual scene. I'm just going to run through what we have um, and then we'll jump into actually creating it. So over here we've got a floor plane and we've got a background plane which is composited to make a seamless background. We also have a, a grayscale gorilla overhead softbox and a HDRI sky. Now if you don't have these you can use an alternative method of just using a plane and an area light. Um, if you want to know how to create your own very very standard um, softbox then request it and I shall make it. Uh, I'm actually making my own um, to give out for free instead of having to buy the Grayscale Gorilla one. Um, but that's in the future. Um, and then after that it's pretty much just the materials down here. Um, if we go to function and remove unused materials you can see all these are actually in use. A lot of them are actually for the Grayscale Gorilla um, basic objects here which are these four and then our only two scene materials are these two here which of course aren't really named um, so let's jump into it I'm going to go over here to this um, document and the first thing I've done um, is just to set up my camera angle now that isn't necessarily a part of the tutorial because your camera angle will, will be or may be completely different to mine so set up a cam camera angle um, I've got it so we can actually see it washing in uh, and with some nice motion blur that would look really really nice. So once you've got that we're going to go up to this icon here and we're going to click and we're just going to say we want to add a floor. And then we're actually going to do the same thing, click and we're going to add a background. Now these will act basically if we render out this is what we get. It looks a little weird right now because we haven't got anything in the scene. If we just have it something like that and render out, you can see this is what we get. Um, one of the first things you want to do is go into your render settings and you want to set up your um, aspect ratio. Now I like to have it at 1920 by 1080 which is HD. Um, I like to lock the aspect ratio and then I like to divide this by maybe 2. Um, we could probably do it by one more so 3 total. Um, divide you by another 2 and this when we render it out it's basically going to give us a very small um, render here so it just renders out really really fast and um, the bigger the actual aspect ratio the longer it's going to take to actually render out so keep that in mind um, of course when you come to your final render you will increase this um, and because you've got lock ratio on if you just change one of them it will actually change the other one to 1080p so it's absolutely fine um, alternatively you can pick an actual preset from down here I just prefer to do it uh, manually um, so we're not going to worry about anything in terms of um, ambient occlusion and all that kind of stuff yet. We just want to set up some lighting. We will be turning that on shortly, but let's fix the background first. So I'm going to make a new layer. You can name this if you want. I'm just going to name this BG. And I'm going to drag it onto the floor and I'm going to drag it onto the background. Now on the floor, I'm going to click on the material and I'm going to basically change this to frontal. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click on the floor, right click, go to Cinema 4D tags and we're going to put on a compositing tag. Now this compositing tag, we just have to click this one thing here which is composite background. So now if we render out, you'll see we get a seamless background. Now this is really, um, it really comes into its own when you add a gradient to this. So let's turn off specular, we're going to go into the colour channel, click on the texture and we're going to use a gradient, not a Fresnel, we're going to be using a gradient. Now we're going to click on the actual gradient icon to go into the actual material and we've got a type here. We want to change this to circular. Now if you can't really see it, right click on the display here and put it to flat 2D. That'll give you a representation of what you're kind of looking at. If we actually just render this out, you'll see that it composites straight up and we get this kind of really nice look. Um, if you didn't have the tag on and we rendered this out you will actually get some different results which isn't particularly what we want so you want to make sure that is on the actual floor now to change these it can be any color you want um, I went for kind of a light to dark 
Now you don't really want to be using white because when you add lights it's going to get really blown out. So you want to use something like a, a grey and then of course to a darker grey. Again, personal preference, entirely up to you. Maybe something like that. So now if we render this out, this is what we get. So, what we want to do now is come out of the camera mode because we don't want to move that. In fact, go to the camera, right click, go to Cinema 4D Tags and stick on a protection tag. And that's basically going to allow us to lock this so you can't move it. Even if you are in the camera, you still can't move it. And that's one way of keeping your camera angle. Um, so what we're going to do is go to the content browser. We're going to go to presets. And I'm going to go into the uh, Grayscale Gorilla kit. Because it's, it's a very accessible kit. It's very fast. And uh, it just saves you doing a lot of tweaking with the lights. So we're going to use our overhead softbox. <clears throat> and with this, if we just go back into the objects and into the camera. And render this out. This is kind of what we get as, as default. Um, nothing fantastic, it looks okay, it renders out relatively fast, um, so it's not too bad. Um, now before we actually start playing with the actual settings of this, um, it's a good idea to go into the actual render settings and turn on the global illumination. So if you just right click in a blank area and click on global illumination, we want to change the general GI mode to um, IR and QMC still and we're going to the samplings and turn this down to low and iridence cache and turn this down to low also and once you've done that you can actually just hit the render and you'll see it's going to do a pre-pass and as you can see the white area here is pretty blown out um, you can fix that um, I decided to fix it with just lights only um, so, I mean, it's your personal preference. You can do it by changing um, some stuff in the render settings. Um, so, in terms of gamma, you can change that. The intensity, um, you can reduce that. And, of course, the diffuse, diffuse depths as well, you can um, change that. Um, but what we need to do now is actually create a material. So, I'm going to make a new material and name this stripe and I'm going to apply this to my null which will apply it to everything now I'm going to bring out the interactive render region just so you can see here um, and then we're actually going to reduce this down because the less it's got to render the better for us and the faster it will render so I want something maybe like that so what we can do is turn off specular because specular I don't really like specular it's um, thick highlights um, the one you want is actually reflection so as you can see, we've got this like really nice, perfect chrome look to it. Now, if you want to add a Fresnel, which what a Fresnel will do is it will, um, things that are facing the camera dead on won't have um, any reflection. But as it kind of tapers off to the edge, it will have more reflection. So if you look in the viewport here, um, in this little preview window, if we add a Fresnel, you'll see that because it's facing dead on to the camera, it won't have much reflection. But as it goes off to the edge, it has more reflection. Now, if you want to reduce this, you just need to reduce the intensity of the brightness and mix strength um, to bring it down so you don't have as much. So this bottom one here, mix strength, will actually change this um, this texture here. So if it's 100%, it's going to have no reflection dead on. If it's down to zero, then it's going to basically act as if the texture isn't even there. So you kind of want to balance this out. Again, personal preference, creativity. Um, knock yourself out with it, basically. Um, I'm going to add a bit of blur. Now, of course, adding blurs will increase the render times, but, um, you know, it looks pretty cool. So I'm going to reduce this a little bit. Maybe to 62. And, yeah, that's pretty cool. So in terms of the colour, what colour do I want this? Well, in my preview, I give it a blue. In this, I might give it a bit of a girly pinky red. Why? I have no idea. But I think it might look cool. Yeah, that's pretty sexy, right? You know it does. I know it does. Everyone knows it does. But that being said, what do we want to do now? Um, well, what I did is I actually took um, the luminance channel and added some luminance to this to really get it going in terms of brightness. Um, so you can actually go in here and just add the same color something like this. It doesn't have to be exact because we will be toning this down, but if you want it really, really bright and to stand out with the background, luminance is perfect for that. I'm going to reduce it down to maybe 29%. Um, it's not exact, maybe a little bit more. It's a little bit dark there. Um, yeah, okay, so about 53%. 
Um, it's not an exact number, but it's fine. Um, I also added um, some bump to this. Now you can go into the bump here and of course add in a noise. And as you can see, it renders out and we get some really organic looking um, results. If we just increase this render, you can see we get some really, really cool results. Now, again, you can do many things with this. You can reduce the actual global scale, which will give it more of a, a kind of a, a dotty feel, if you like. And um, you can see it looks very, very cool. So let's say we're happy with that. Um, let's just go and do a full render of this just to see what it looks like because it might look good just in that little area but maybe the backside that we are rendering out looks completely weird and we don't like it um, so looking at this it looks really really funky actually um, so yeah that looks pretty cool and what we're gonna do now is to kind of finish it off now I had some problems with this so we'll see if we can avoid them in this but what we're going to do is we're going to go to the content browser and we're going to add in a HDRI sky. Now this isn't necessary. Um, I'm going to reduce the actual um, quality here because one of the problems with the interactive render is if you have the quality up high, it's going to render that out and every change you make, everything you add, it's going to update it. So it can actually slow your scene down a bit. So it might be advisable to turn it off when you're actually adding new things. Um, as you probably saw, we had a little bit of a lag spike. Um, but I'm going to go into this setting here and I'm going to go into um, my HDRIs and I'm going to use maybe number two, which is my favorite. And if we render out this little section now, we're going to get some different results. And that is because the actual HDRI is affecting this scene. So if we kind of like this result, then by all means continue. I don't particularly like the results that I'm getting, so I may reduce the actual reflectiveness and I may reduce the Fresnel as well and actually I think reducing it might improve it I might actually bring it up instead um, and again you can play with these um, to match what you are kinda going for um, I kinda like that it looks pretty cool I might just reduce that down and yeah the, the reflections are as in your face right now which is pretty cool so just kind of getting a balancing act here. Um, okay, I think that looks pretty cool. And um, with a bump, we can actually reduce the bump as well if we wish. Maybe you want something a little bit more subtle, like that. It looks pretty cool. Um, and then what? What do we want to do? Um, that's pretty much it, really. Um, I mean, there's there's nothing to it per se. You can um, just mess around with it and kind of do a quick render to see if this is what you are looking for. Um, as you can see, maybe the bump isn't particularly what we want. Um, so maybe we can actually just reduce the bump uh, maybe to maybe 1%. So it's very, very, very subtle. Um, and maybe that will show up in the renderer, maybe it won't. Maybe we'll have to go like 0 0.1. And I think that actually worked. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That's a lot better. Um, I kind of want this a little bit brighter though, so I'm just going to increase the illumination a little bit more. And the good thing about rendering to picture viewer is you can actually just toggle through these with the arrows up and down. You can kind of see, well, the brighter one looks actually a lot better. The background could basically be used to brighten things up a little bit. So we can jump back into the background, into the color channel, and we can go into here and just maybe increase the color here something a little bit lighter and here maybe a little bit lighter as well and then just do another quick render and that's pretty much what you do you're just gonna go in you're gonna tweak things to see what looks good what doesn't look good what could be improved and stuff like that um, so one of the things that you might want to do is in the overhead softbox I don't think it's on by default but yeah shadows actually are on by default um, so you might want to increase the shadow quality just kind of play around with it. We might want to look at a different angle, um, trying to find when it goes close to the floor. Maybe something like that. So let's do a quick render of this. And yeah, I can kind of see that it doesn't go close enough to the actual floor. 
in order for it to give us any um, shadows. You could turn on ambient occlusion to kind of fill them in, but I don't think it's actually necessary, and it's just gonna increase your render time. So looking at the white background, again, it looks a little bit too bright, so I'm gonna go into here, and I'm just gonna reduce this down a little bit. And we can also reduce the actual intensity or brightness of this down just slightly and then do another render and we can just kind of compare these and get the balance correct um, so out of these two you can see the background does um, go down a little bit which does help a lot and you can see a very very faint shadow down here again this is a very small render um, but what you want to do now is what we could do in fact is going to the renderer and we want to basically output this we want to output all frames up to how many frames that you want I'm just doing 90 and what I will do is I will render this out and it's gonna say the file name specified blah 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 just hit yes and this is gonna render out so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause here and then I'll be back once it's rendered out and hopefully it won't take as long so be back soon okay guys we are back and it's rendered out it took only 8 minutes and 23 seconds which isn't too bad you could probably multiply that about fr maybe 3 or 4 um, so you are looking you know within the hours but that isn't bad comparing my render which was with full animation which took 7 hours um, ridiculous amount of time but just looking at this um, you can see each frame is around 4 to 3 seconds per frame at this size the maximum was probably the 13th frame here 13 seconds to render out that and that was kind of the pinnacle of this it's got the max um, glossiness in the frame um, so you've, you know, you've got all these glossiness that need to be rendered out and you can see here we don't have as much but because the actual entire frame is pretty much filled up of these stripes that's why it took the longest and as you can see it, as they went past it gradually got lower and lower and lower and lower and then lower uh, back to the three seconds, which is the average frame for here. Now, of course, you can you can get away with some of this, like this section here. These frames, you could probably save your time in these frames. So let's say it's actually quite a lot. So from here, technically, you could actually get rid of frame sixty-eight to frame 90 and the reason for that is because it's the exact same frame so what you would do is you would actually just copy this frame in post production and then you would duplicate it outwards um, in order to recreate this instead of having the time here actually rendered out because this you know equals up to at least a minute um, with all these frames or close to a minute so you can see you could actually save a minute in rendering which might not seem a lot but when this actually renders out in full HD you are looking at maybe 20 to 2 minutes per frame especially on just these blank frame fl frames not flames <laughs> and pretty much you know that does in the long run add up so you could use some cheats like that but let me just play this out for you as you can see it looks really really nice um, there's not much to to say you could add some motion blur you could do that in post production again to save a lot of time and um, you could add your color correction in post production don't forget this is just a raw render this is just the thing that you pump out of cinema 4d taking into something like after effects to add in some levels and some color correction and some cool effects you could make this look really really nice um, but that is pretty much it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial um, and thank you very much for watching and thank you to the person who requested to see it because without requests I'm pretty much, you know, I don't really know what to create. I'm not sure what you guys are actually interested in creating um, or seeing, you know, any, any type of tutorial. So if you do have any suggestions then please leave a comment about it and you can leave on any video I always check all the comments um, and I always reply to the comments that I get um, I also reply to personal messages as well so if you do want to send a personal message in terms of a tutorial request feel free to do so and that is pretty much it so thank you again for watching I hope you enjoyed and make sure you hit that thumbs up button and of course subscribe I will catch you next time peace